Arapaho tribe lived in the valley known today as Estes Park. They called the valley the Circle. The name Estes Park was first mentioned by the founding editor of the Rocky Mountain News, William Byers, in the 1860s, after staying a short time with Joel Estes and his family. The name stuck, and the town of Estes Park became a tourist attraction for people all over the world. In 1874, Wyndham Thomas, Wyndham Quinn, the fourth Earl of Dunraven, traveled through Estes Park while on a hunting expedition. Under the Homestead Act, he purchased 15,000 acres of northern Colorado, including all of Estes Park, and built his own hotel in the middle of town called the English Hotel and Lodge. The British aristocrat had no intention, however, of becoming an American citizen, and when more and more settlers began homesteading in the area, they either sued him for the rights to the land, or simply ignored his ownership claims altogether and claimed the land as their own. Lord Dunraven was eventually forced to give up his ownership claims to the land. The show could not be managed from home. We were being frozen out. Freeland Oscar Stanley and his twin brother Francis Edgar were born and raised in Kingfield, Maine. Both Freeland, or F.O., and Francis, F.E., were gifted inventors. After leaving school, they set to work on improving manufacturing, modernizing, and creating many different products and technologies, such as a prototype for the modern airbrush, manufacturing violins, a photographic dry plate company that revolutionized the photography industry, and the steam wagon, later called the locomobile, but more commonly referred to as the Stanley Steamer. With their talents, the Stanley brothers had amassed a fortune, but when F.O. Stanley began having symptoms of tuberculosis in 1903 and given only a short period of time to live, he traveled with his wife Flora to Colorado that summer. At the time, people with tuberculosis were encouraged to seek out drier climates in hopes of reversing the symptoms of the disease. Over the summer season, F.O. had quickly improved. Both F.O. and Flora were so taken with the beauty of the area, they purchased land in Estes Park and began construction of a new hotel to provide travelers a place to lodge. The Stanley Hotel opened its doors July 4, 1909. F.O. was initially set to name the hotel the Dunraven, but due to his good-natured reputation with the locals at the time, they insisted he name the hotel after himself. The Stanley Hotel sits atop solid granite surrounded by Rocky Mountains. With no central air conditioning or heating, the hotel is situated to provide cross breezes that cool the hotel in summer. When the Stanley was first built, it was claimed to have been one of only a few hotels in the world to fully be lit by electricity alone. Although a gas-powered lighting system was installed as support to light the 140-room hotel. On June 25, 1911, two years after opening, an explosion rocked the west wing of the Stanley Hotel as the result of a leaky gas pipe. 10% of the hotel was destroyed. There were no deaths in the explosion, but several staff members were injured, including one staff member who suffered serious injuries as a result. Elizabeth Wilson, a chambermaid at the Stanley Hotel, walked into room 217 with a lit candle. Gas had filled the room from the leaky pipe, and immediately there was an explosion. The blast ripped a hole in the floor of room 217, sending chambermaid Elizabeth Wilson to the ground level floor and into the McGregor dining room. Elizabeth was lucky. She suffered two broken ankles, but eventually she recovered from the incident, and soon she was back to work at the hotel as the head chambermaid. People began reporting paranormal activity shortly after the explosion.
Through the years, the Stanley Hotel began to fall into disrepair due to lack of management and investor neglect. In 1974, author Stephen King and his wife Tabitha were living in Boulder, Colorado, an hour's drive from Estes Park. While on a short vacation, they arrived at the Stanley Hotel just as the winter off-season was beginning. With only limited staff and the hotel closing the next day, they were given the keys to room 217. The Kings were the only guests in the hotel, which made for a creepy environment as Stephen and Tabitha had dinner in the dining room alone. Stephen walked the long narrow hallways and eventually made his way to the hotel bar. Lloyd Grady, the hotel's bartender, served him and explained to King, Your money's no good here. The books were already done for the season and opening them for a single customer would be more of a hassle. There are two possible stories at this point. Either King had already formed the story of The Shining in his mind while exploring the hotel and before he returned to room 217, or the story's outline came to him after a nightmare that he had that night. In the dream, his young son was being chased down the hallway by a fire hose. King was jolted out of sleep, sweating, and nearly falling out of bed. He lit a cigarette and began putting the pieces together that would later become the novel The Shining. The 1980 Stanley Kubrick movie, The Shining, is based on the Torrance family, who were caretakers of the Overlook Hotel, a fictional hotel in King's novel. Exterior shots of the movie's Overlook Hotel were taken at the Timberline Lodge at Mount Hood in Northern Oregon, although the film was mainly shot in England's Elstree Studios, along with a reproduction of the Timberline Lodge's exterior. The interior of the movie's Overlook Hotel was inspired by the Awahi Hotel in Yosemite National Park, California. Going to the Sun Road running along the western shore of St. Mary Lake in Glacier National Park, Montana was used in the opening scenes of the movie as the Torrance's drive to the Overlook Hotel. The movie and Stephen King's novel are two separate works. Stanley Kubrick only used the very basic bones of the story to King's disapproval. In 1997, Stephen King wrote the screenplay for a new series based on his novel. The Shining miniseries was filmed exclusively at the Stanley Hotel and faithfully followed the events of his book. Elizabeth Wilson incredibly survived the explosion that rocked the Stanley Hotel in 1911. However, her spirit is reported to still be lingering in room 217. Guests and staff have reported activity in 217 that may be an indicator of Mrs. Wilson's ghostly presence. Guests' shoes and clothing will be unpacked from their luggage and rearranged Guests will return to the hotel and find used towels and sheets, neatly folded and put away. According to one staff member, a guest woke to find the bed was made all around them while they slept. As well known as room 217 is, the fourth floor is reported to be the most active. Commonly referred to as Lord Dunraven's room, room 401 has had such a history of being haunted, the Stanley Hotel sells souvenir keys to the room in the gift shop. 
believed to be the ghost of Lord Dunraven. Guests and staff entering the room report being touched by an unseen presence. Women, in particular, have reported having their hair played with or feeling an invisible entity placing a hand on their shoulder or waist. Men who stay in room 401 report keys, watches, or pocket change disappearing from the nightstand, only to find them later in the toilet. The male spirit is mainly connected to the room's small closet. Guests and staff have reported the closet door opening and closing in the middle of the night. While staying in room 401 myself, I had several interesting things happen. This picture was taken while laying in the bed during an EVP session. I fired off seven flash pictures. After looking closer at the very last shot, I noticed something in the reflection. At 10.30 p.m., while I was exploring the rest of the hotel, one of the cameras pointed at the supposed Lord Dunraven hotspot closet caught this. It's an amazing piece of evidence that I later tried debunking myself by walking the hallways and throughout the room in an effort to recreate the door opening by itself. I couldn't get it to open. In room 407, a spirit that is mainly reported around the bed has been known to tuck people in at night or sit on the edge of the bed. A guest of room 407 said she felt someone sitting on the bed. When she opened her eyes, she turned on the light, but nobody was there. However, she could clearly see the indentation left on the bed by an unseen entity. Room 418 is supposedly haunted by the spirit of a ghost child, or children perhaps. One of the common claims of activity on the fourth floor is a playful spirit of a child named Billy who likes to run up and down the hallways. In 418, lights in the bathroom will turn on and off and hangers in the closet will move on their own. A woman and her young daughter staying in room 418 say that a hand of a little boy kept tickling the little girl at night. She wasn't afraid, however, and asked the ghost to stop. And it did. Could this be Billy? The cowboy ghost is said to enjoy staying in room 428. The apparition of a man in cowboy attire has been seen on multiple occasions, pacing back and forth at the foot of the bed. In a polite manner, a guest reportedly asked the cowboy entity to please leave after seeing him in the room. The cowboy spirit obliged. When first entering the Stanley Hotel's front doors, you were met by a beautiful staircase. The staircase landing on the second floor, however, is believed to be a super highway for spirits traveling into our earthly plane. Some believed that by placing mirrors facing each other, the ghosts would be confused and become trapped in our world. Guests and staff have reported feeling cold spots catching orbs on film, and shadows darting in and out of the corner of their eyes. In 1909, F.O. Stanley built the concert hall as a gift to his wife, Flora. Located on the east side of the main hotel, the concert hall is known for creepy vibes and frequent ghostly apparitions. F.O. Stanley's ghost has been seen on multiple occasions, where he and his wife would sit and enjoy performances in the hall. Below the hall are several rooms and hallways. 
One of these rooms was where the groundskeeper Paul lived. Paul was a longtime employee of the Stanley Hotel and well liked by guests and staff. Paul passed away in the room, but his spirit is said to still be there. Pictures of shadows and a man's blurry face have been taken in Paul's room. Lucy's room is adjacent to Paul's room below the concert hall. Lucy was a young girl who more than likely was a runaway. She took refuge in the room below the concert hall and would stay quiet for some time while taking shelter from the cold. According to legend, maintenance workers stumbled upon her on a cold Colorado night and ran her off. Her spirit is said to enjoy Elton John music and she's even happy to interact with you, if you ask nicely. Flora Stanley was an accomplished pianist and played her 1909 Steinway Grand Piano for friends and guests. Flora was not only a socially active host at the Stanley Hotel, she was a civic leader and dedicated wife and partner to F.O. According to staff, she would occasionally host seances in the hotel as well, which was popular entertainment at the time. Guests and staff have reported the sound of a party going on in the music room, as well as the piano playing by itself. It is said that when a curious person steps over the music room threshold, the music will suddenly stop. It is also reported that the apparition of Flora will appear in the mirror behind them when someone looks at their reflection. While exploring the outside grounds of the Stanley Hotel, I discovered a small path that runs along the hotel's west wing. I followed the path over a road past ancient boulders and down a small flight of stairs. Something caught my eye. A small graveyard tucked away along the side of the path. The graveyard is the resting place of pets going as far back as 40 years. After my surprising discovery, I asked the front desk for more information about the pet cemetery. The cemetery was originally closer to the hotel overlooking Estes Park, but at the behest and warnings of several pet psychics, the cemetery was moved in 2014 to make room for a wedding venue and corporate pavilion. During construction, burst pipes, injuries, and machinery malfunctions had some wondering if they had made the right decision. After the relocation, a golden retriever named Cassie is said to wander the grounds on the west wing of the hotel near the old location of the cemetery. Could moving the graveyard have caused these strange events? That sounds familiar. You only move the headstones! <laughs> One of the hidden gems of the Stanley Hotel is the tunnels. A small door on the ground level floor provides access to the creepy underground cave systems. Used by staff and servers in the early years of the hotel's operation as to keep a less crowded appearance for guests, these tunnels were carved from granite bedrock that is said to absorb psychic energy. Multiple pictures from people who have ventured into these tunnels catch figures peeking from behind the rock. Several people have said they feel cold spots that seem to move through them. The ghost of a head chef named Pierre, who once worked at the Stanley Hotel, is said to still remain in these tunnels. It is said you'll know Pierre is nearby if you suddenly smell baked goods or cookies in the tunnels. When someone brings up the topic of a haunted hotel, Undoubtedly, a major portion of people will immediately be drawn to Stephen King's The Shining. 
One of the really great things I discovered while investigating the Stanley Hotel is the friendly staff and management who embrace the title of America's Most Haunted Hotel. I'm not a psychic or sensitive to the other side, but as I entered the Stanley Hotel for the first time, I could feel the energy of the old hotel. It seemed like the hotel itself was an aware and living entity. I should say, in my personal opinion, the ghosts of the Stanley Hotel do not seem evil or scary or anything along those lines. You may get a creepy vibe here and there, yes, but historical sites left by people in the past will inevitably draw in spirits that love the place years before we discover them. The beautiful Colorado landscape as a backdrop for the historic Stanley Hotel can only truly be appreciated in person. Drive up the mountains and breathe the fresh air. Spend some time in Estes Park. Have a red rum drink at the Stanley Hotel's bar and cheers Mr. King and the spirits. Take the ghost tour and stay the night in a haunted room. You'll have a fantastic haunted adventure. Hey, I'm Alex. If you like this content and would like to see more, check out my other videos and go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss what comes next. See you next time.